What's cracking, guys? Uh, we're back, and we got a very special video episode of Driven Crazy this week. Uh, I've never done this before. First time doing it. This one's going to be up on YouTube. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all the normal places you can find this. But it will be on YouTube as well. And for this episode, we've got the fantastic Christina Montori. I met Christina shortly after I got into comedy about a year ago, and she's become a great friend and an even better comic. And uh, yeah, we had a fantastic conversation, uh, and we got the whole thing out here for you guys. Uh, I apologize for the, the weird irregularities, but uh, my life has been a bit of a disaster uh, the last month or so, and you'll hear all about it. Uh, we get real, we talk about some crazy stuff. One thing to plug before we start watching, uh, before we get into the podcast, um, I've got one show coming up that I know of. Uh, it's going to be at Lux Lounge in Roanoke, Virginia on May 19th at 7 p.m. If you are uh, not watching Game of Thrones like I am, come out to that. Come check it out. It's going to be fantastic. Christina's on it as well. So we, uh, we plug it a little bit in the podcast. You'll hear more about it there. You'll get more details. But uh, yeah, that's the one thing I got coming up. But if you come out to that, it'd be fantastic. It's $20 in advance, $23 at the door. So get your tickets now. Uh, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a killer lineup. And uh, yeah, let's get cracking. Trying to abuse the fact that people find you attractive to get more, I was, more I was views. Sleeping, <laughs> I was sleeping in my Uber. Sleeping in my yeah. Uber. That's the already, name of your. That's the name of your album. Yeah. So this is already like we already started this podcast. We've already started this podcast. Jeez, Colby. I, I mean, know. You get to look cute and stuff. <laughs> it's okay. How's it going? I have not seen you since my life fell apart in several ways. Your life fell. How old are you, Colby? Twenty one. I'm gonna doctor fill your ass right now. Oh no. Oh Maybe. no. My engagement. So I, mean, I started off this year breaking my tailbone. And we're currently up to my engagement ended and I watched a man kill himself the second we convinced him to live in the last month. So you watched a man kill himself? Watched a man kill himself. So I wanna, see, see when the way you say this, like watched a man kill himself and not like saw a man kill himself, okay, see, makes yeah, it sound like you knew it was going to happen and you're like, I'm going to watch this today. Well, we I'm did. Gonna, we were trying to like I'm help gonna, the guy as I'm much as we could. I'm going to enjoy this. It <laughs> was, <laughs> you ever just get in a situation where you don't know what the hell to do? Uh, like that daily. was a, that was the situation. Cause daily. all right, all right, I'm gonna go over the whole story on this because uh, this is this is fresh. Okay, good. Um, all right, so Harlan and I were going downtown to get food because she'd recommended this taco place called El Jefe that I'd never been, and I'm always down for tacos. El Jefe. Hello. Yeah. Now, so we get there and we're like, she's like, oh hey, uh, Mitch lives here. Mitch is a mutual friend, so uh -huh. we're like, hey, let's invite Mitch. And Mitch shows up, and we're in the restaurant, and he didn't want to eat outside, but Harley wanted to eat outside, so we ate outside. Okay. Uh, and we sit down and like we order, uh, and there's this good dude just like standing on a bridge nearby. Right. Uh, and we, like Mitch is like, oh man, he looks like he's really thinking about it, just jokingly. Right. Uh, and we all had a weird feeling about it. Okay. And then Harley says, do a backflip, right? Because we're horrible people and we oh, joke no. about it. Oh, right? did he hear? No, he didn't okay. hear. We were far enough away they didn't oh, hear us. Okay, and then okay. so then I went <laughs> to the bathroom. Cheering this guy up. He's <laughs> Contemplating <laughs> life on Earth. <laughs> Do a backflip. Oh gosh, I, I, oh, I really hope it didn't hear us. Anyway, but anyways, oh, so I go to the bathroom uh, and I come back and all, the first thing I see is they're both gone. I'm like, did okay. Thanos just straight up snap these two out of existence? I didn't okay. know what happened. Uh, but what happened was the second I left, the dude climbed over the railing uh, and Harley and Harley like she's still bruised from when she like kicked the table because she just went and ran she oh. like opened the gate went to go uh, grab the guy because she in the moment of adrenaline right. felt like she could pull him up uh, and the guy said if you touch me I'm gonna drop oh. and yeah and it's she she, she like has dealt it. yeah she has dealt I'll with share that man's last moments she has dealt with suicide and stuff her entire life and wow. so she said she told me she's like please sir it gets better I promise you it doesn't seem like it but yeah. it does and she said it was the first time in four years that she's actually believed that uh and that's what makes the rest of this even worse. So Mitch was like, Harley, get back, call the police. And so she goes to the restaurant nearby and calls the police. Yeah. And Mitch, like the guy tells Mitch to get off the bridge. And Mitch is like at the end of the bridge on his knees, hands in the air, talking to the guy for like 10 minutes. And uh, what ended up happening was he, they convinced him to come back over. Okay. Uh, and he was working. And I had come back. And I'm like, where are these guys? And I went down there and I saw him on the ground. And he's yeah. like, get back, get back. I'm yeah. like, I don't know. So I was like standing there not knowing what to do. Uh, and my first thought when I saw the guy on the other side of the railing was that's a weird exercise because I, I couldn't grasp what was going on and then I mean just the next thing I knew I heard Mitch scream his name and I heard the dude hit the ground Whoa. and I didn't know I mean I, I, 
one thing I've, I've learned about myself, uh, I, I have a hard time dealing with things, but if there's ever someone around me that's worse off than I am, I can handle anything until I get the situation sorted out. Yeah. So my first thought of the situation was, oh God, where's Harley? Yeah. I ran, found her, uh, we got that straightened out, Mitch went down, the police got there the second after the dude fell. Uh, just in time. Just, exactly. Just, uh, Mitch is an army just, medic, so he ran down and helped assess the situation. Clean up crew. Uh, and then, then I, I drove Harley Lynchburg? there. Huh? Lynchburg? Lynchburg Police. Uh, this is not still not better than the news yet, by the way. Well, see, I used to work in the news. They're probably not going to cover it. No. Uh, because we did we, we actually, you wouldn't believe how many people commit suicide a day, Colby. That's a good point. You don't, <laughs> you don't report on suicide. That's a good, well, um, yeah. Usually, unless it is a famous person and people are going to be like, that what happened to that guy? You that know what I mean? Sense. You have to report it because people are wondering. Or if it was very public, like if there was a crowd, if it was like a festival going on right. and some guy decided to like okay. jump off the Ferris wheel, that makes we sense. wouldn't just pretend that didn't happen. We're like, okay, we got to report on this shit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, your situation, like how many people do you think witnessed that? I think like 20, maybe 15, 20. Okay. Well, yeah. So, I don't know. I guess that's, that's the news station's call, but a lot of times yeah. they won't report on it. Um, uh, I'm sure some of it has to do with like respect for the fans. I don't, yeah, actually, I actually, yeah. I don't know. I got. I, I, I just forgot wish, exactly what the reason was. I, I wish I knew more about the situation, because yeah. that's that's just killing me. Like it's just not really knowing yeah. anything about yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, so, so have you gotten any dark jokes out of it so far? See, like my selfish comedian. A couple. Ass, like, I'm gonna try Colby, some tonight. He, Colby calls me. I just witnessed a guy commit suicide. I'm like, this is great. Start writing some <laughs> shit down. <laughs> well, so Harley just started getting into comedy. Like the second yeah. she stopped sobbing, she's like. I have to figure out how to make this a bit now. I'm like, I love that's this how girl. I know she's Already. supposed to. Oh, you're gonna her. love her. Like, I love her. Uh, yeah, that's the best thing about yeah. comedy is like, no matter how shitty things are, no matter how bad yep. a situation is, you're like, this is inspirational. Yeah, this we're gonna we're, we're the two. We're gonna try to figure out like, to divvy up who's gonna get to talk about it in what way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, like, but that's part of what tonight's gonna be is figuring that out. But I mean, yeah. I've got like a basis. This might end up being one of those things where it's like five minutes of storytelling followed by one like horrible darkness and then like one joke well, at the end that like yeah. ties it together. Yeah. Because like, I left and I, I, it was horrible. At first I was like, I didn't get the damn tacos. I still don't know what the tacos are. I didn't like. get the tacos. And like three days later, once we're both finally okay about everything, she's like, have you ever been to La Coretta? I'm like, I've never been to La Coretta. She's like, we should go to La Coretta. I said, Harley, you're a zero for one on Mexican restaurant recommendations right about now. So I would rather jump off a bridge and go to a Mexican restaurant right about now. So the tacos were to die for. Actually, uh, well, we can go. Oh, 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 there you go. I thought that was bad, but I'm glad you laughed. I laugh at everything. You just laughed because you're polite. Yeah, I laugh at everything. Um, <laughs> The, we, did, we just went back yesterday, and the tacos are fantastic. That place is a gem. Uh, I'm using your video as a mirror, by the way. That, they, why not, right? The world see it all. Let me tell you what, Colby. My skin, when I went to Florida, yeah. it just started glowing. I'm sure. I get to Roanoke, boo. I start breaking out again. This place, it's not good for my skin. Or Lynchburg now. But I was Lynchburg. Right Lynchburg's not good for anything. Southwest Virginia, not good for my skin. It's a horrifying place. Yeah, so that was... It's okay. That was something. I had never seen something. anyone die before, and I've been dealing with like momentary PTSD flashbacks. You know, Colby, PTSD flashback suicide. Like we have bigger issues, like the pimple on my forehead. Like I think we need to just spoken like a true stop news being, lady. Stop being selfish right now. <laughs> <laughs> just <stop. laughs> no. A man that died, is, but my skin. Oh man. That is serious stuff, though. Like yeah, it was. It was uh, like it's making me want to jump off a bridge, Colby. Like, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, then no, really, it's serious. Like, I do feel for you. Like that's some dramatic stuff. I'm glad that you're able to laugh about it already. A little I, bit. That's how I process everything. Uh, for, know, for was, better or for worse, it was that's gonna what happen I do. whether you were there or not. That's you know true. What I mean? Like that's maybe true. this was like the comedy god's little gift to you. It just put you in the right spot at the right time. You never know. Oh, look at me! I'm glowing. You're glowing. Is this a filter? Oh, no. No, it's just, it's just the, the weird angle. When I said comedy gods, it, 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 oh, it's <laughs> telling you it's a sign. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't I don't have a lot of stuff planned. I don't have much new stuff. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've got new stuff since the last time I've seen you, but I don't have anything like this week. Okay. Uh, I mean, this might be one of those get up and just talk times. I'm going to do the same. I've been working more Yeah, but that, on, that's been working for you. crowd work. It has. Do you know what's weird? Every time I get up and I have a planned thing, like, it goes okay. Yeah. Every time, like, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to be just as surprised mm-hmm. 
at the things coming out of my face is all of you, and it seems. See, to I'm too hard. scared of just choking. Because like I've, I've I've struggled with that more recently. Like I sit down to write a paper, and I'm like, why I am I incapable of, of the generating tr- words? The trick is the trick is you gotta be like a comedy Jedi, which is the same as being a lunatic. Yeah. It's not caring what the people think, right? I stopped it's caring like, what people think. You guys think. are already here. You can leave if you hate it. Since this breakup, uh, I have stopped caring what anyone thinks about anything. Uh, I, I, I have dropped any sense of obligation I feel towards anyone and anything. And That's this has wonderful. honestly been great. You're going to be a better person. I'm, it sounds I'm like you're going to be an sh- asshole, but really you're going to be a better person. You know why? Because people I'm not only burnt out. have... Yes, you only have a certain amount of fucks to give. That's true. You know what I mean? And when you're a people pleaser, you and when you're dating give someone, all of your fucks away. Like, you like, and when you're dating like someone in a terrible a, situation, a, yeah, his mom is dying. Yeah, you give all your fucks. Like, all a random lady yeah. on the street, I'm going to give you a fuck, I'm going to give you a fuck, I'm going to give all these people fucks. And then when people who actually need you are like, Colby, can I have a fuck? <laughs> you're like, I got no more fucks! Yeah, well, that, that's, just, that's when I would go into then, I would go into fuck dead at that point. Yeah, so that was my but problem. now you're just like I don't really give a fuck about that. I don't yeah, give a fuck about that. Yeah. So then when your friends and family and people who are close to really need you, you're like I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one way to that's, put it. I, uh, I like that. I, you, I, I, I didn't eat for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I like eat for three days. Because I got to the point where I realized, I'm like, I'm no longer carrying the entire burden of a second person's existence. Yeah. And I stopped stress eating, and now I have to relearn how food works. <laughs> to relearn how food this, has been, this is an interesting experience. It, it's just, I go back a month ago, and my life was so tr- dramatically different. Uh, I'm not texting, by the way. I'm writing down that. I'm making that thing into, like, a bit. That, you know, you know gives a fuck thing. There you go. That's a good one. I mean, like, comically large oh, water bottle over here. shit. If someone finds my phone one day, Colby, they're going to yeah. be like, this is some beautiful mind shit right here. Like, this girl was struggling. This girl, <laughs> like, you should see the stuff in her phone. Hey, if I die, will you read all the things on my phone at my funeral? Absolutely. Okay, good. Read it I, in that, that God Gilbert voice. Gilbert got <laughs> There we go. There we go. I should have hired that, that out as a gonna, service. You're doing that bit on the 19th. Oh, of course I did. Okay, okay, okay. That okay. bit got long. Did you long. tell the people? Is this even going to show before? show or what? Uh, probably. This is probably going to be the next one I release. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Colby is going to ball out with his new dark humor side, I hope. The I problem know, is I record on. so many of these and then I get excited about one and I'll release it and I just keep backing up and I've got one from winter break that okay. I still haven't released well, you got to release this one so that we can get people hyped for our That's show. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So I'll just give you the deets on the show. I had never said deets before. Oh, no. Am I that person? Uh, maybe you're that person now. Anyway, Florida, Florida you got, turned you, got, you into I that person. I got so excited to see you, Colby. I started saying deeds. Oh. Um, so here's the deeds. It's May 19th, which is a Sunday. You've got nothing else to do. You're listening to podcasts as we speak. So like We're no, watching you on YouTube. You don't have a whole lot of social life, but you can meet people at this event have more of a social life. Or you can not meet people and you can shut up and listen to us. That's even, another even option. Even better. Even better. Because we don't care about your life. We just want you to come and laugh at us. With us. Um, there you go. You fixed it. With you us. Saved it. At us. Too. I'm okay. Laugh. You can laugh at me if you want. I, most of my it's, stuff is laughing at me at the, this point. <laughs> it's going to be 7 o'clock in the evening. It's going to end at 9. So you can you can be in bed and go to do your work things. It's not a problem. If you go to bed before 9 o'clock, then I don't even want to know you. Like, well, I used to do it, so. Really? Like, uh, well, you had to wake up at, like, what hour? Two in the morning. Yeah, I see, that to, makes... I used to go to bed at six in the evening. So if you're one of those oh. third shift people, like, I feel for you. Um, but uh, we're not going to go into that right now. Anyway, I'll start over from the top. May 19th. It's okay. a Sunday, 7 p.m. Lux Lounge. 213 Lux Lounge, Virginia. Lounge, Virginia. It's on Williamson Road. It's um, going to be catered by Tony Avellino's. Uh as seen in the Roadacre magazine, really good food. We've got pizza, pasta, the whole Italian vibe going on. Uh, it'll be buffet style, so you can eat a lot. Okay, your ticket's twenty dollars. If you buy it now online, it's going to be twenty five dollars at the door. So better to buy now. That's true. And we did this show. Was it what, like six months ago? I don't Something remember. like that. Yeah. We sold it was out. November. We ran out of chairs. We ran out of chairs. I people. was there. It was insane. Yeah, we ran out of chairs. I was so stressed out. I was like, oh my god, we don't have any chairs. We're gonna stress out and, the kitchen staff. Yeah, and it? then I had like this. Then I was like, just ease in for a minute. Just ease in. Like, chill out for a minute. And I was like, wait a minute. This is a great problem to have. We ran That's out of true. chairs. That's very true. Oh, yeah, we ran out of chairs. <laughs> so this time I'm gonna have 200. We 
we have 200 chairs available. So once 200 tickets are sold, uh, no more people get a, a ticket. So you do want to get those tickets like soon. Um, dinner and a show, 20 bucks. That's, Honestly, that's yeah. really good. Featuring yours you truly. Yeah. I mean, we might see a mental breakdown on stage. Oh, yeah. So Who I, wouldn't want to see a gay marshmallow of oh, a breakdown on this stage? This be great. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. but how, how's the heartbreak going? Like, with the... With the, with the relationship? With, yeah. That's... I've been over that for... We, we, we've talked about the, the... The people know, right? The, no? Uh, no, I haven't should, talked about should, it yet. Should we tell them? This is like the first one... Well, this is the first one I've recorded since that happened. All right, well, I'm going to let you tell your story, or we can just skip it. I mean, there's not much to tell without getting into personal details, but... Uh, mm-hmm. You're a comic. You gotta get in those personal details. Uh, a, uh, a an important thing in any relationship <laughs> is, is is love languages, obviously. And I hate to sound like a liberty student with that, but it's a real thing. It's an important thing. And and I'm one of those people who has an easier time adopting someone else's love language, uh, at least as far as like giving is is concerned. Uh, but when you're in a relationship with someone for almost six years, yeah. and they just they, they, it's nothing against her. She tried. She gave yeah. it every last bit effort she yeah. had, and I, I'll never say otherwise. Uh, but she's just never able to quite do that. Uh, and, 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 and I had moved down here and, like, become a person. Like, I've got, like, a, a life going on yeah. here. And I got, she didn't know the me in Virginia. Because uh-huh. it's such a... It, it's, my life was so drastically different. She never... She hadn't moved out or anything. Uh, so, it, it, like, I was growing. You know, she was sort of staying in the same place. Just sort of yeah. waiting on me to graduate so we get married. Yeah. And I was like, I can't... I can't be a, a support... <clears throat> Like a safety net for someone, you know what I mean? Uh, as much as I wanted to, because I've had a savior complex Clearly, my entire life. Like I jumped a bridge, you did nothing. So. Exactly. I, I sat there. Harley not tried a and failed. Net, this guy. Better not to try than try and fail. <laughs> Write that down, <laughs> kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but but you know what? You're you're 21, yeah. and now you're single. Yeah. It, it was you mutual. I mean? We both we it's, literally both brought it up at the same time. Uh, no hard feelings. It's We're a good friends. Thing. It but. hurts for a little bit, but it's a good thing. It Sometimes. did. It hurt a lot, a little longer. No one knew that there was problems. There was one person in my life, Grace, shout out, who had any idea that anything was wrong. Uh, so everyone just feels like it's kind of out of the blue. It was not out of the blue. And even, I mean, I might sound like a little bit of a hippie spirit child with this, but I truly believe it. So even if you were having some problems and things were like, whatever, 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 I really think you learn some things from it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, some people... I don't people, regret a day of it. Yeah, and some people say things like, oh, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Maybe it was meant to be. It was meant it's to be meant for to those be, six years. Exactly. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, and then now, and you're not moving on. You're not forgetting them. You're no. moving forward, forward with what you learned from them. That is very you know true. I mean? Like, that you're always going to be a part of each other because oh, yeah. you learn, you became who you are because you yeah. had the opportunity to love each other. That's, Absolutely. You're just fellow humans who had a special connection yep. and you can love and respect each other yep. um, on opposite ends of the world now. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> opposite of the size or of the, the coast. city or whatever. Where, where, <laughs> whatever she lives. Like, like a 15 degree wedge of a pie. Yeah. But it makes it so much easier uh, too, just mentally to get over breakups and things when you look at it like that. You're not actually having to give up a person. You're not losing anyone. Oh, yeah, no, You're no. just moving in a different direction. It was not that hard. It, I'd been getting over it for months. Yeah. Which was part of why it's that it, it made the surprising comeback. Yeah. Uh, but well, I mean, not to mention I had a support I had a support network like I can't like believe you're only twenty one. You know, I know. I've been those twenty one year olds Colby can't have a face to face conversation. You got podcasts going, you're getting on stage, you're getting it done, son. So, so that's been my whole life. <laughs> like if you talked to me when I was five, you'd think I was an adult already. Because <laughs> I didn't have friends in my age group because I wasn't allowed to watch Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, so uh-huh. I had no bonding with the rest of the nineties kids. <laughs> so most of the, my friends, like the people whose opinions I cared about were my parents and my parents' friends. And I was great with them. Like I was the, the I was like the king of like adult kid relationships. Yeah. So I've been an adult my whole life, uh, awesome. which is part of why being some people used to think I'm, the I'm opposite. Yeah. I'm still like, am I an adult? Like, like you're like, oh, when you have children, you'll feel like an adult. I'm not gonna have children. I might adopt some or go. kidnap some, but I'm not gonna. That's the other thing. Now that I'm, I don't feel obligated to have kids or something. I'm like, I think I, what I want to do is I want to eventually someday when I'm well off adopt an older kid. Oh yeah, I would love to adopt uh, like a child star, like someone like just start. Going, kind child of like, star. What was that? What was that? Um, How many more social blindside? media followers do you need, what was, Christina? What was the blind side? When, I don't think she, I ever she saw adopted that. the football player and he was famous. I don't think I ever saw anyway, that. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna adopt. I'm gonna adopt a like 
kid that was really good at something. <laughs> so then they'll make a movie about how heroic I am. Like and Shazam. I'll get to live off this kid's salary. There you go. <laughs> Hit a kid who can take care of you. That's what you're going to do. No. I'm no longer trapped in the cycle of I'm going to have a kid. I'm going to force my kid to be a pilot. And they're going to resent me because of it like everyone right, else I know. Right. Real talk, though, I do want to adopt a kid who's like between the ages of like 6 and 12. Yeah. Just because those are really hard ages to get adopted. Absolutely. Right? When I used to work in the news, they had this thing called Fox Kid of the Week. Oh, my God. It was the most heartbreaking thing. It was almost like watching those things when like you need to adopt a puppy. Yeah, and yeah. And going, this puppy is great. He can do this. He can do that. He's great with kids. But it was a kid, so it was like even more heartbreaking. And the kid was with like had this resume for themselves. They were like, I can color in the line sister and I'm like oh my oh. god why doesn't everybody love you I can't but like someone should <laughs> no I was I, I could I, my life was not anywhere together to, to have a kid at that point it's still not but when I'm 40 which is in nine years my life is more together like since to it fell apart I just got a bed I finally got a bed for the first time in my life what and you didn't have a bed I didn't have a bed I, mean, I had a dorm a, bed on a hammock or a dorm bed I was oh, on a, yeah, that's yeah, was on a basically dorm bed. a piece of cord Yes, essentially. And I realized that's why I've been so tired all the time. Last night, I faded out of, straight up faded out of existence for about two hours of the night. I was gone. There was no me. That, that was a, that was an experience. I got a, a killer deal. Student, student discount, and I was getting it the day I was there. Uh, dude gave me a great deal. Mattress outlet in Lynchburg. If anyone's around here looking for one, great place. Cold. No, you're fine. I'm gonna cut my. I'm just still. I'm still Florida. Like, oh, you're still Florida. I'm in, oh my god. I'm sitting here telling telling my Google Home to turn the temperature down in my room like a like a douche. My, guess what? I keep my thermostat on in Florida. It's on AC. Guess what I keep it on? Christina, what do you keep it on? Seventy-seven. Oh, you're disgusting. We can't be friends and anymore. And I'm staying with my friend in Roanoke right now, and he keeps his thermostat on. 70 and I keep mine really at 67 cold. or something. Oh my god, we couldn't exist. See, okay, okay. Now, now every every Different female things. I've ever met in my life is always freezing cold, and so they always yeah. jack it up. Uh, Harley's place, her her thermostat is kept at 67 or 65. And this is Whoa. when I knew. Soulmate. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went over there. I'm like, I can bear to be in this place. What is happening right I'm now? I'm not gonna lie. I was so a while back. I was kind of seeing two different dudes. I mean, now I'm seeing much more than that. But at the time, <laughs> at the time there was two, and um, and I really wanted to just pick one. And right. I was like, okay, was the thermostat wanna... the deciding factor? Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel I that swear. big mood. Was, I feel that. They were both great, and I was like, this guy keeps his house on like 60s. This one keeps his place apartment on 70. It was like 73, 74, and I was like. And the other guy did have more food in his fridge, so that was also an issue. I was like, well, he's got more food, and then, but I'm like, but I can pack a lunch, but it's just, but changing the temperature was always an argument, right. you know? I love how I've, my dating game is like how, like, homeless people find a place. Like, what's the temperature? Is there food there? Like, I'm, the problem is I'm a space heater. Mm, I, I, I will raise the, the temperature in any room I'm in by five degrees. Oh, I thought you were talking about you use space heaters, but you are a space heater. No, no, I would never use a space got heater. It, got it. That was the other. That was the other reason I was. <laughs> well, I should just tell people the reason Danielle and I broke up is because she had a bed heater, like a heating pad she put in her bed. How sick, evil, and twisted is that? To put a heating pad in your bed? Yes. It sounds good. No, it doesn't. It's like you need the idea. room to be like. 50 you know what I degrees. do? I have a hair dryer by my bed, and before I get in the bed, I'm like. Mm, oh no, no! Warm it up. I want the bed to be cold. No. Yeah, no, you're wrong. It needs oh, you're to be so warm. wrong. It needs to be warm for a while. I thought I needed like a partner to snuggle me. Um, turns out, hair carbs dryer, and a hair dryer. Hair dryer, carbs are great, and a, a weighted blanket. Weighted blankets. Weighted blanket. Let me show. It's Don't like a hog without the thing. commitment. You know? Exactly. Uh, it's that was, really great. I was, I was crashing at my my, my friend Grace's uh, a couple of times, and they had she has weighted blankets, and oh, oh. Mine's leaking a little bit of sand though. But oh no. Oh, these they are like the legit ones bit. with glass beads. My parents have like a 60 pound one and I almost got to take it. I was so, I was this close. It's really good. I, I like know. to like, like shimmy down in it and just let it lay on me and yeah. just like I'm stuck. Oh my God. So yeah, then it, feels, then it feels skin tight and I get, I, I get self-conscious. I'm I in need... my bed alone and I get self-conscious. 
self-conscious. Welcome to where I'm at in life. Why do you get self-conscious in your bed alone? Huh? Are you going to dive into that? Why are you getting self-conscious in your bed alone? I, d- cause I don't know. I'm just constantly self-conscious about myself. Yeah. Well. Why do you think I seek validation from strangers on a weekly basis? I mean, don't we all? Most, some people don't. We're, we're some people are totally fine not doing this, and I don't get those people. I get, I, I have to check my Instagram. Um, it's kind of like a, a obsessive compulsive thing. Yeah. The likes. Oh, see, likes I just don't posts. get social media enough to. I um, well, I use it for you know promotion. promoting. Yeah, and you're good like at that. that. Like, I want to hire you. But it always makes me laugh when I see things that people write. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like it just, it just makes my day. You know? Yeah. I'm just loving it since 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 all this crap has happened, I've just been better at work. Better at work. Like Claudia's like, can y'all get back together and then break up again? Because you're <laughs> I you might single handedly like, save the office. Do you think it's like you're at. trying to keep your mind off of things? So you're just like uber focused I don't know what it is. Like a weight is lifted, you're happy, it's that's, like that's things. part of it. That's part of it. I don't I know. I love how like one like you're so bipolar with your feelings, but it's good because it's I really natural. Am. It's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster life and, and especially right after breakups yeah, because you're like feeling like oh wait new exciting things and then like one little trigger will happen or like a sun a sun is setting oh the sunset always gets me and then you're like oh I love sunset Virgin, uh, Virginia's going to get the, the best the sunsets I've ever had, seen you know oh I don't miss it uh, well I was I was um because the, the parts of it that I had I um, still have You know what I mean? See, see. Like, like, like us being in a relationship and not, has not been all that different, mm-hmm. which is part of why I realized it was the right idea. Yeah. Well, you are, you are very lucky to have found a very nice thing like that. You know, I did the same thing. I got out of a marriage. What are you shushing about? Oh, nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't want to talk about your, your, your. I've got a, a very good support your, network. Your, your, your masturbation toys. Oh, those! That's let's bring that wide open. When you say toys, <laughs> as if it's not just a Ziploc bag, Vaseline, and a couch. <laughs> oh my god! Any man out there listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Ziploc bag and, and what? Vaseline and a couch. See, I've heard about the couch, but I didn't realize the Ziploc bag and the Vaseline's part of it. That makes a lot of sense. It just makes though. it, yeah, it makes That's it a lot not, easier. Oh gosh, you guys have. Such we get creative. Cool. Ways. I know, and we spend all of our creativity on that and then have let nothing else left over for anything else. I love that. That's usually what I ask guys on a first date, like how they masturbated if they were. That's a really interesting question because you, you, <laughs> you must give me your top you three. Really, what are the really top three answers? Because there's got to be some good well, ones. Well, usually it's like, whoa. But, but here's the thing. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So couch, couch is one. Couch is one. Uh, a lot of them say... A lot, I think they're lying, but everyone's like, I mean, I just use my hand. I've never used anything else. I'm like, come on, if I had a dick, I'd put it everywhere. Are you kidding me? You just only used your hand. That's dumb. That's yeah, not. They, they might now, I but look, they didn't I like, always. Like, they think I'm going to look down on them for, for like, if they tell me like their freak side, but really right. I'm looking down on them because I'm like, this person lacks creativity. Yeah, like, see, there you just, go. This is there terrible. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like to ask off the wall questions to guys, that's and good. I like to do weird things because. I'm not looking. It's great, Colby. I'm not looking for a relationship in my life. I love riding solo. Yeah. So I get to be a hundred percent me. I get to be a total freak um, because it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like best case scenario, the guy's like, "Wow, you're weird." Matches my weird. We're yeah. great, and that's happened a lot of times. Sometimes it's like this girl's out of control. She needs to get out of my apartment. And I'm like, <laughs> bye. Bumble next. <laughs> 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 and it's great. And um. You get to be. Oh, okay, you can speak people, this from people, the other side. People of the open equation. up so much faster when you open up first. You know, like I'll go into like a guy's place and I'm just like, hey, what do you have to eat? And I'll just like open the fridge like I've been oh, living yeah. there for years. Oh, you're like, my I'm idol. I'm gonna take off my shoes. I'm just, I don't wear makeup. Like when I go, this is what I look like for dates. Like this is terrible. But um, it just whatever. I'm just like, this is it. Like this is what I'm gonna do. If you don't like it, I'm gonna move on to the next person because like I'm not auditioning for girlfriend here. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to hang out. There you go. So I'm gonna be comfortable. While I hang out. And it's, I like it. It's so I like it. I fun. Really, I really like it. I have been asked. It can't. So you know how people do like the "Can I see a dick pic?" thing. They want to see what they're getting into. I don't. Well, know that, they do no. that. Christina, and, um, I've been single for three collective years of my life. Not none, none oh, okay. past okay. none okay. past okay. the age okay. of fifteen okay. until now. Well, 
well, guys will like ask like if I want to see because like you know I'm very direct with like yeah. with things. Uh, I'm on the road a lot doing open mics and different shows and stuff. So sometimes Brandon. I'm like, well, I mean, I just I would like to I'd like to get laid and I'd like a nice place to stay. So I'll get on the dating apps, right? And um, I'll be like, I'm gonna send you a pic, and I'm like, all right, that's great, but can you send me a pic of your shower? Like, can I just see what the shower situation is? I like you, it. you like a two sheet guy or a one sheet guy? Like psychopaths people only have one sheet on their bed I, I you know, have one just a sheet blanket. On my bed. you just give like, like a blanket because three just, seconds into getting into bed the sheet sweaty. is at my feet you get sweaty you need two layers of sheet you need one See, sheet the, okay okay oh you want to know why you get sweaty because yeah. you keep your bed at 89 degrees like a psychopath <laughs> no, you just you need two sheets because it's gross too you get all your body like your skin like there's little bits of skin particle that comes off on on the blankets that's why you need two sheets you can wash the sheets so that it wouldn't work because the sheets are gone within 10 seconds of me being in a bed anyways. They're on the floor. No, I'm so I'm a burrito. Um, Do you just like stay in the same position when you sleep? No. Because I don't. I am a stallion. And Honestly, the, be, the, the sheets just end up gone. I usually end up on the couch because I sleep better by myself. Um, that offends people so much. Really? Like, even when I was married, like... My husband was cool about it. Like, we slept in different rooms a lot of the time. Like, we slept in the same room. We, like, banged it out and stuff. But then I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go to my bed. I'm going to go to bed. Mainly, I think I got used to it because um, of my work schedule for so long. For seven oh, years, yeah. I was doing TV weather, and I had to wake up 2 in the morning and went to bed at 6 in the evening. So we were, like, not on the same schedule at all. It just made more sense. It must have been kind of rough, bed. though. What? It must have been kind of rough. It must have been rough. Yeah, it was. It was pretty rough jobs have their own yeah. bit of rough. Yep. You know, the schedule wasn't great, but... Hey, hair dryer in your no. bed. I can't even look at you. Hair dryer in my bed. Can't look at you. Can't yeah. do it. Can't do it. Yeah, that's... That's it. Um, alright, so... Oof. That was... That was... This is like... That was the intro. Let's that's get on to... Uh, let's, just, let's just start with the Christina origin story. Origin? Yeah, the origin. Like, everything. Okay. About what me. what made you need people's validation? Was it was it parental? Was it like peer related? What um, what gets to why you are the way you are? Uh, a couple of, can coupling that with like the narrative of how you got to where you are because you've got an interesting one. Okay, I'm getting water real quick because I'm getting dry mouth. All right, sorry guys. All right, here we go. This is life water. It's actually tap water. I've been life water. water, water. Yet? Yeah, that's. I've been refilling this one for a hot while now. My comically large water bottle. Okay. So. If you want to really know where it all starts. That's what I, that's, that's what I'm here for. I have a memory when I was a kid. Ooh, oh, oh, this, here we go. I was brushing my teeth. I was getting the back ones really good. And my mom comes in and she said, Christina, and I knew, I don't know how old I was, but I knew I had to be on a stool so that I could see the mirror. I was a little kid. She goes, you're spending way too much time on your back teeth. Spend more time on your front teeth. And I was like, but I use my back teeth to eat. <clears throat> and she said, people see your front teeth. They're more important. And I think that's where it all started. Wow. <laughs> wow, that got good. Right? I think that, I really do think that might, might be where, where needing validation, you know, started. And then wow. and when I was in elementary school... I was always very quirky. Mm. I have some strange mannerisms. You remind me so much of the weather girl from uh, Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs. Oh, I don't, okay. I don't know if you ever seen that movie. No, I need to watch it. You but, really do, because okay. you look like her too. Oh, cool. Like, but, it, it's, it's, ah. it's, it's, it's disturbingly accurate. Okay. Well, well, I was just very awkward, you know what I mean? And people would always say, like, you're weird. You're weird. They said, you're weird all the time. You're weird. And I was like, Same. what's so weird about me? What's so weird about me? And then um, over time, I started uh -oh. to kind of adjust. What's what's up? Fire trucks. Oh, what is that? Trying to kill is that an old folks' home? Oh no. Oh. I mean, it's pretty much <laughs> cool. It's an old folks' home. They lived a good life. <laughs> My grandma's in one of those, and they they have a they have to have a <laughs> stove, otherwise it becomes hospice care rather than assisted living. And they just oh. like they force them all to put microwaves on top of the stoves, so they can't get to them. Like, that just sounds even more dangerous, because one's going to turn it on haphazardly and burn the place down. Yeah. Ugh. 
Speaking of burning the place down, I'm excited. I can have candles in my new place. I couldn't have those in my dorm. You can have candles in your I am a slut for candles, so this is going to be really good. Slut for candles. Slut for candles. And blueberry and Chinese food. So what would you do for a candle? That's a, we'll make it work. Unspeakable things. I don't like that. <laughs> you you don't like that. <laughs> no, I didn't like I didn't like what I tried to do with that jingle. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so so I'm okay with you, you doing unspeakable like, things. Like everyone should just do whatever they want. Was going into whether like your first <clears throat> first thing you wanted to like you just like settled on that you wanted to do, or was there something before that and you ended up in that? I always wanted to be a scientist for some reason. That's all it'd be really a cool to have. It is a scientist, yeah. basically. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I think scientist, I think of a dude in a lab coat. Like, oh, okay, like no, I wanted. Off. I really wanted an ist after my title. It's oh, okay. Just Smart, you know what I mean? I like that. And I was like, I don't know, should I be like a biologist or an archaeologist Ooh. or a paleontologist? And you picked the most interesting one. And then I got, became a meteorologist. Now I study meteors. Um, <laughs> that's what a lot of people think. You know, this weather guy came to our school when I was in third grade, and I just thought it sounded really cool. So I got into that. And um, But I was always really into performing as well. I loved school plays and things like that. It was weird because I was very awkward and shy off stage, but yeah. once I got on stage, I just felt like very yeah, alive and absolutely. very comfortable and very in my element. Um, and then it was this 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 thing, like, do I go after science or do I go after performing? And I don't think I did this. Um, you kind of went after both at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think I did that logically. Like, I, don't, I think that was more of a subconscious. It sort of happened. It just sort of happened. You know what I mean? Sense. Like, yeah. oh, I kind of want to perform, and. Um, I'm also good at science and math and stuff, and this seems like a cool way to, to do both. But I think what ended up happening was, I mean, it was great for a few years. Yeah. It ended up getting very boring after a while, and I think it's because I didn't go full force into a passion. Right. I think my passion, I think I was good at science. You're like, I, you're... I was good at science, and I think that's what I wanted everyone to see, was like, yeah. this is a smart person, right? And I was too afraid to really go after that performing passion, yeah. you know, because everyone wants to perform. Everyone wants to be an actor. Everyone wants to be a singer. No, everyone like, thinks they do. You know what I mean? Everyone um, thinks they do and so we'll do it yeah. and they realize it's not and what then, they want. Like, I guess one day, I was 29, I did everything I was supposed to do. I had this wonderful husband who I still love and respect very much. Um, we can go in, that's a whole other discussion, yeah. but a but, uh, great husband. Uh, great house, great job, like, my mom was super happy about everything, you know, um. That's, and, oh, the parents, that's always the scary yeah, part about, like, divorce yeah. or breakup. Yeah, and I was like, and I'm like, I'm gonna be 30 soon, and I'm not happy. I just didn't feel happy, and I didn't know what it was. I couldn't put, like, my finger on it, you know, and, and this is gonna sound kind of weird. So my dad, um, my dad died shortly after my mom. Okay. Uh, that's a whole other story, too. Oh my gosh, but right now but anyway tragic death of my dad he was only 48 and um whenever that song played on the radio you know roll to me look around your world pretty baby oh yeah everything yeah. you hoped it'd be yeah. right and uh every time i heard that radio song or that song on the radio i felt like it was like a sign for my dad being like mm. this is the wrong situation like Interesting. you need to change your life because every time i thought like i need to change my life like that song would come on it was I don't know. I'm not like a religious person, but I am very spiritual. I'm like, the universe is talking to me. I always think the universe is talking those. to me. Yeah. And I was just like, I need to change my life. Like, I'm not happy. Um, you must love you made it weird. Huh? You must love you made it weird. Do you not know you made it weird? No. Pete Holmes podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Comedy sorry, sex guy. Sorry, I didn't one. hear what you said. Sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, That place has amazing fried chicken. That's great. That's the one thing I love about Virginia is like you never know it, but the gas stations in the state of Virginia are where you get your fried chicken. That's where oh, the wow. best of the best is. There's this one in Charlottesville where you, if, you, if you spend ten or more dollars, it's called Brown's Gas Station. We're so eighty. If you spend more than ten dollars on gas, you get a free piece of fried chicken, and it's lit. I love this place with all of my heart. Okay, where were we? The universe. Yes, the universe. Oh yeah. But of course, you know, I needed to stay true to what I was supposed to do. So it's like, 
screw the universe, I'm just going to be unhappy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to do this because I made a commitment. You know what I mean? I have a commitment to my job, I have a commitment to my husband, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, you're here. And I just did it. I couldn't do it. And then one day, and I was like, and everyone's going to be so mad. Everyone's going to be so mad if I, if I change my life, you know? And then uh, some time went by, and I started to get this, like, this bulge on my, um, like, right below my abs, like, where you're, like, if I had an eight pack, like, uh-huh. where they what would be, but it was, like, <laughs> really hard, and it hurt a lot, and I was, like, gonna ignore it for a while, ignore it for a while, and I'm, like, I gotta go to the doctor about this thing, like, this is weird, I went to the doctor, and, um, doctor feels it and stuff, and does some stuff, and then she goes out, and I can hear her, I don't think she can, thinks I can hear her, but she's in the hallway going, I have a patient here, she has a very, very alarming mass on her oh, abdomen. God. She needs to be taken in for scans immediately. Clear your, just put her to the front of the list. She needs to come right now. I'm going to have someone drive her now. And I was like, holy shit. Like, and then she comes in all peaceful, like, um, we're just going to do a couple of things to check. It's probably nothing, but, um, you need to, you need to cancel any plans you have today so that you can go right away. And I'm just like, Oh my god. And you know, in that moment, a normal human would be thinking, what? Oh no, I might die. Fear, yeah. right? Yeah. You, the, the, the um, natural human emotion for a healthy human is fear. Do you know what my emotion was? Thank God it's finally over. Relief. Yeah. yeah. Relief. I was like, finally. Finally. I'm out. I'm out of this. Mm. Right? And, um, and I thought, and you know, maybe, maybe I have like a month to live or something, and then I'll get to do all the things I always wanted to do, and no one's gonna judge me for it because I'll be dying. They'll be like, oh, she's dying. She, that's okay that she wants to travel. That's okay that she wants to do this. It's okay because she's dying. And I'm like, I would rather, like, I'm not excited to live for one month, right? And I'm like, oh my god, why am I not, why I'm am I not that now. living right now? You know what I mean? Like. Why do I care about what other people think so much? They don't live my life. I'm with myself for 99.9%, 100% of the time with myself. They're with me for, what, 10% of my life? They're not thinking about me as much as I think they are. Why am I living my life for everybody except me, you know? And um, I'm like, well, perfect timing. You made that realization. You're about to die, huh? Um, But... (laughs) Right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, some days go by. I finally uh, get a call from the doctor. Like, what? What is this? You know? And then she's... <laughs> I was constipated. I was literally full of shit. So... What was that? <laughs> that was the perfect way for that to end. <laughs> it really was. I was constipated. That's a bit. That sounds like a basis so of a good bit. So I had to take some stuff, and I, I just shit for a long time. And then I was so much skinnier. And then I was that day, but I did take steps to start changing my life, quit my job, and then eventually, um, my husband and I realized we both were on different paths, you know what I mean, love, respect each other, we were happy to have loved each other, but we needed to go our separate ways, because I wanted to live one life, he wanted to live another life, you know what I mean, like, he, he really loved that marriage life, Yeah. I want to be on the road and see where the night takes me, you know, you can't really have that, it's not not fair to have someone you while you're out trying to make something happen, right, a right. dream happen, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And then, somehow or other, which you will now say, comedy fell into your lap. Yeah, it did. I started, I mean, I started doing comedy, I was, I was married when I started doing comedy. I'd quit, I'd quit my job first. Right, well, started, what was the thing, what was the events leading up to the very first time you ever did it? Okay. Like, why were you there doing it? Okay, so I've, I've I would say I've been writing comedy my entire life. So, you know, I've been writing, even since I was a little kid, I kept journals that's, that's of funny what I, things. That's what I realized. Like, I, I would, happened. whenever anything would happen, I would find the funniest way to tell it and tell it to yeah, everybody yeah. individually. I'm like, that, that's yeah. exactly what that is. I have this whole journal of like, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, and I, since I was a little kid. And when I was doing uh, weather on TV, like, I would sometimes just kind of riff about different current events in the news. And sometimes my like, co did not like me talking about certain things on live TV, but I mean, obviously it was sensitive. Knowing you as well as I do, I can believe point. that. But yeah, I would just kind of blurt things. Um, so I feel like comedy has always been part of my life, but I guess the first time I like actually went to an open mic, right? That's how you start, right? You go to an yep. open mic, you try it out. I was in Denver. 
Denver, Colorado. And it's so, like, movie-esque how this happens. I so know. the universe just talks to me all the time. Uh, <laughs> or I've got multiple personalities going on. But I had my, my book of things I think are funny. You know what I mean? And I um, always thought it'd be cool to do comedy, but didn't really have the guts to do it because I had, um, like, compared myself to people who have Netflix specials and have never actually yeah. been to a movie. And um, I was just feeling kind of down, and it was raining as it does when you're feeling down. Like very, very theatrical, very cinematic. Yeah. And, um, I had one of those today. Yeah. And I was just like, walk. I was walking around Denver by myself. Um, I was there with friends, but they were at work and I didn't have a job at the moment for the reason I was kind of down. I didn't know where I was going with my life. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Why did I even quit my job? I have no purpose. I'm just walking around the rain with a book of funny things, you know, like writing some dark stuff down. And I'm like, I'm just going to call an Uber. And I get, get gonna it, and I, I was like, going to just Uber to, I just put like a destination down, like downtown area. I forgot exactly where it was. But then, then I was like, I'm going to get an Uber and ask like, where's a good place to go? A good local spot. And I get in the Uber and the guy was like, um, when I asked him where I should go, he goes, well, I don't really get out a whole lot other than doing comedy. I'm like, yeah. comedian. Um, I was like, you're okay. a comedian? That's really cool, you know. And he was like, "Yeah, so like I could tell you where to go, like to an I could bring you to an open mic, but I don't really know of anything else going on." I'm like, "All right, bring me to one of those, you know." And um, and, he, he, and it was it was it was terrible. So I call. I call so <laughs> Everyone. Oh. It was. I, I I'm glad it's gonna be hilarious. I've heard so <laughs> many stories of you like, "Oh, my first time was amazing," and I'm like, "My first time was awful." Harley's first time was great. I'm like, why does everyone else have a good first time? I had a good second no, time. My, my first time was a, was a dumpster it, fire. It, it, I looked like a like a the, a bridesmaid in a blackout is what I looked like. Just so confident in what I was saying, but it was not good at yeah. all. Everyone was like, she's she, 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 someone tell who's she with? Did somebody take her home? <laughs> and I'm just like, listen to this, guys. You're not gonna believe. Oh, and no. I told, so I did call my friends, like, when you guys get off work, come down to this open mic. I'm oh, no, 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 no. I did call them to come, because I was so confident. And then, and, um, they came. And it was, this is what they said. They, this is my comp, this is the best compliment. You know what I mean? She yeah. goes, she goes, um, I loved how you were so unapologetic. <laughs> like, you just trudged through, you knew it wasn't working, but you just... Oh. Kept going. I was like, oh. it wasn't working. What? <laughs> I, felt, I felt good. I felt good up there. Oh, I think it was God. good. But I did record it. You did? And it was not good. You have <laughs> was this recording not, somewhere. I don't. I think I deleted, oh, I deleted no. it. I shouldn't have deleted it. I regret it. I didn't record it. my I still have been recording it my second I do regret it. Never. If you're a comic, never delete that yeah. shit. I deleted it and I regret deleting the, it. I don't even, at the I time, don't, I was embarrassed. And I was like, no one, this needs to end right now. <laughs> I don't necessarily... What day of the month is it? Uh, 13th. I've got... Oh, I've got 11 days until my one-year comedy anniversary. Ooh. I know. Uh, I don't... I almost don't even really count my first time as my first time, because it was... I didn't. I had nothing written down. I don't count my down. first time either, because it was in the butt. <laughs> All right, Catholic girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first time, I, mean, I didn't have anything written down. I went up and I just sort of stammered and forgot half. I forgot half my premises, let alone I didn't have right. any punchlines. It was second time I actually had like a semblance of structure to things. I count that. I have that one recorded. That was a lot of fun. That was the Good. first time I met Chris Allen. I was at the Richmond Funny Bone. Cool okay. experience. That was the Funny Bone open mic's a good, 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 good little place. So you did. So your first open mic was kind of local. My first open mic was at the Southern. That's kind of ballsy. What do you mean? To, like, do it where you know people, kind of. I don't know anyone there. Oh, I guess you do now. I live in Lynchburg, yeah. The only reason I know I anyone I guess I'm thinking, like, because you know, I, I feel like we're all part of that now. Yeah, but... yeah, I was not at the time. Okay. Like, I knew three people in Charlottesville, and they were all sound. I was living at their house, and I knew okay. they were not going to be there. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to see a friend in a thing tonight. <laughs> They're like, okay. And then I went, I went downtown, because I, I, I had seen the poster for it a long time ago, like, like okay. a year before. I was like, oh, I should try that. Yeah. And I was there for a month, and I started watching Crashing, Pete Holmes' TV show. And yeah. Like, oh, if he can do it. And then, oh, if he can do it. Because some of the, especially the first season, some of the bombing scenes yeah. are, oh, man, it's, it's like, you know you can do better than that. 
and I saw I knew there was an opening I looked it up and I was like oh look it's this week and I went to it I knew no one there do you remember what you talked about uh oh man I tried yes uh I talked about um opening line was was the most hacky thing I was like so this is officially the summer I'm done working in food service really applause break who here has worked in food service couple hands so you all share my uh irrational fear of white moms <laughs> that kind of thing and I started talking about like I, I, I get this thing I call cashier brain where just sometimes things come out of my mouth that go past my higher reasoning because of social anxiety like it was like uh, it was so bad it was awful I should never have said it like <laughs> I should never have made it this public and I'm making it public now but it was like I was at uh, a subway once and there was a woman from uh, oh gosh I don't even remember it was so long ago uh, I wanted. She was, it was some some Middle Eastern country, uh, and and she had asked if I wanted the sandwich on white or wheat bread, but with okay. an accent. And I and I just I said fight without. We just passed my high reasoning, and I just repeated the first thing I heard out of her uh-huh. mouth back to her. And I'm like, oh no, I need to go kill myself now. That's not <laughs> that's not okay. Or like this one. Oh no, I was at Cold Stone. This was this is so bad. I was making this dude ice cream, and he's like, can I get it? Spr-? He's a very flip point guy. He's like, can okay. I get sprinkles? And I said uh, rainbow, right? Okay. <laughs> this went right past my higher reasoning. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. He's like, ah, oh, it's for a friend. Don't worry about it. I'm like, you're cool. Uh, that was, I felt that was, I wanted to die. That was not good. And I talked about that to no laughs. Okay, okay, I, no I, I, laughs. I had a similar, um, that, that you just reminded me of a story. Um, so you know how I've been living in Florida. Yeah. I was on the beach. And, like, you know how when kids are digging holes, like, in the sand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it's, like, a funny joke to be, like, what are you kids doing? Do you hole in China? Right? Like, that's a thing you say. Yeah. You've heard this. Oh, that's a dad line. Yeah. Harley, I heard and the I, best one the other and day. And I'm just trying to be friendly. Like, these kids yeah. are, these kids are, like, like, I just see the top of their head. And I'm, like, what are you kids doing? Digging a hole in China? These two Asian kids pop out of this hole. And their parents. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm, like, of course. That's a, that's a moment straight out of the office. Of course. <laughs> just, <laughs> I look like an asshole. Oh. Their parents are just like staring at me. The kids have their shovel like, this is 2019, bitch. <laughs> I live for those and kind of like, sitcom moments. All right. I had Cheerio. one the other day. I had one. Keep so walking. I have this teacher who, he's a great, I, I love this man to death. Uh, he, one of the sweetest human beings I've ever known in my entire life. And, and the, the things he's said to and done for the two most important people in my life is that he, this, this guy has impacted in so many ways. But if you mention something he cares about, it'll go up. So we started talking about American cheese, and <laughs> the whole As class, the whole class turned into a discussion about politics uh-huh. and religion and like the meaning of life. <laughs> and he, 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 he'll, he'll go and it's like sit on a desk in the front of the classroom whenever I, I was going to, before the whole tragedy happened, when I had to reschedule my finals, I was going to go in before the final and tape a piece of paper with a table uh-huh. that said the teacher's name soapbox. Because <laughs> this is the thing, it's where he sits when yeah. he's giving us the real, the real talk. Yeah. And uh, he was, he's got a big, a big TV that we use instead of like a projector. And his screensaver is like it's just dictionary definition, so like words will just like go across and we'll see the definition. And he's sitting up there talking about an older older dude, conservative uh-huh. guy. He's like, you know, man, you gotta come into this country, you gotta learn English. I mean you can't you can't just come in here and expect to live the life in your old country. You're an American for a reason, you gotta assimilate and you know, and as he's saying this, the word bigot just slowly scrolls oh, across the screen. This is scary. And like right next to his head and then it flashes into the definition oh, while he's going in this tirade. And I'm the only person in the class that was even struck. I had I was choking, trying not to laugh. I love it when Everyone else, like that it was beautiful. It was it, ma- it was magnificent. One of the best so moments of my magical. life. And and no one else got it. And I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Those are oh, that's my favorite. I love when things like that happen. You ever find yourself just like chuckling to yourself because you're noticing the comedy and like everything around you? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. no, I turn my, I internalize my life into a sitcom. Oh, yeah. And, and what I'll do, I'll, I'll, like, name chapters. Like, if I notice that something's been happening for a while, I'll rename, I'll, like, I'll, I will title the, that chapter of oh, my yeah. life. For sure. Like, Cooking and Bojack is a chapter of my life. Because I would go over to my friend Grace's place and cook constantly, and then she got me in a Bojack. And so that was, it was, like, Cooking and Horses, that's, like, like, like that kind of thing. Like, all horses. Oh, yeah, no, I straight up will monologue my own life all the time. Like, I, like, I'm, like I'm living in a, uh, like, a, like, a, like a TV show. Yeah, we're all, the main, we're all the main character in our, I know. In our story. I feel like a character an awful lot of the time. 
but I feel like a side character. What? Oh yeah, this is all right. We're getting character we're getting story. Don't tell me it's Jesus, you liberty kid. No, it changes. (laughs) It changes. This is we're getting into real boy hours. I had this conversation with somebody the night, and this is like I'll go to my friends' places, and I'll just I'll sit on the couch, and we'll start talking, and then all of a sudden I just spill. And this is one of the things that just came out, and I'm like, wow, did I just say that? I feel like a secondary character in my own life. So my life has been from like age age one. I spent so much of it. I, all I cared about was what like my parents and my parents' friends thought of me, and that was nothing no, through no fault of their own. It's just the way I am. Uh, and so I felt like I was living to be what they wanted. And then right. I went into I got to school and no one liked me, so I tried to be like what they wanted. Yeah. And then I got to high school and I tried to be what everyone around me wanted there. And then I got right. to college and they're like. I don't have any close friends that I've known longer than like a year. Yeah. Because everyone comes into my life, we get real close, and then uh, they're okay. Like, I am yeah. with them through... That's the thing. Is there, there's, a, there's a plague. When I start getting to know someone, something terrible is going to happen, and I'm going to help them through that, and as soon as they're better, they're gone, and I never hear from them again. A lot of times, that's what happens. Uh, most of the time. I've, like, I've got a couple of friends now that I'm like, okay, y'all are probably going to be for life. But, I mean, until very recently, that was never a thing. Uh... And it feels like I'm there for exposition to, like, a, like a side character who shows up and helps them through everything, and then once it's better, it's gone. And I have no more focus to my life, and I'm just there. Like, the, like, like you know how, like, when the news, like, the, like, it's done and the cameras are still rolling and they're, they're yeah. just sort of sitting there? I get a lot of times in my life where I just feel like that, where it's like, everyone's okay, no one needs me, I have nothing. Gotcha. And I just, just fall into a nothingness for a little while until the next person came along. That's that's what I mean when I say I'm a secondary character in the show that I'm a part of. So you've been playing the part of whatever is needed in each situation. Exactly. So you're not like yourself. You're just like, no. well, this person came to my life and they need a firefighter. So I'm going to put on my firefighter hat exactly. and I'm going to be their firefighter. And now the fire's out. I guess I don't need to be a firefighter yep. anymore. Now who am I? Okay, well, this person needs... Um, this person needs a big brother. I'm going to put my big brother hat on and be a big brother. And exactly. it's like, oh, they're all grown up. They don't need a big brother anymore. Well, now who am I? Yeah. And then <laughs> I got to a point where like, I had a crisis where I'm like, I don't know who I am because I'm different around everyone, I, everyone I'm around. And when I'm by myself, I'm nothing because I have nothing to be. And that's when I was like, that was, there was, there was there's been a couple real rough ones. And then I got, the longer I've been into comedy, the longer I'm like, I'm myself are. when I'm on stage. Yeah, and then you. It's and I, then I listen to it back. I'm like, oh, that's how I feel about that. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, that's the. Getting uh, to be yourself on stage is really, really rewarding. Oh yeah. Because then, that's then what you I, are. You're still because because I feel like you, we all have a need to to be useful, right? Yeah. To, that's why you had to be the big brother, the firefighter, the whatever, whatever, whatever. Those are metaphors. But because <laughs> I never thought but, I never I didn't accept yeah, it for yeah. who I was, not who they needed me. Right, until right. Like very, very recently. But it's like when you do comedy, you get to be yourself, and then people enjoy who you are, and yeah. you are now still of service because you're making people laugh, and you're making people smile, and feel connected. And I think so. Obviously, when you're when you're just beginning in comedy, right? Yeah. You you're learning the rules, and like we're, we're yeah, I, 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 I consider myself a beginner. I think we're beginners. We're sure. like in this in this game at, at the beginning. How to do this? How to do? Yeah, you know, I've been on TV. Suck it. <laughs> but we're, we're learning all this stuff, right? Yeah. But we're just learning. I think what do they say? You have to like learn the rules, then you can break them. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then, so I'm, I, it's like I'm starting to break some a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? Starting to go into that territory because I think like we, headlining a show in Roanoke. <laughs> why not? Do it. <laughs> if you can pull it off, if you can do it, by all means, do it. Fuck it. Yeah, why not? I want to start doing that. You got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. like, can you do it? And I'm like, I'm doing it. So how else would you we'll know see you how do it. it goes. Yep. Um, but, but just creating your own style and everything. And I think when you're going like from open mic to open mic and you're doing shows, it's important to adjust somewhat, right, to learn. Yeah. But not to adjust too much because I feel like some, this is my opinion, some comedians, they adjust they are to make the masses laugh yeah right and i think when you do that you can get up to like here pretty quickly right Mm -hmm. like i've learned the rules of what makes most people laugh Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get to this level of of comedy and i'm gonna be very comfortable here and i'm gonna 
do some shows and make some money, whatever, whatever. Well, I think you gotta get, but then you, gotta, you get burned out because now here you are wearing another yeah. mask, right? But I think if you can be patient and stay down here with all all of your creepy humor that no one gets, but just you know it, yeah. you know it's funny to someone because yeah. you've made some people just cackle. You've made some people belly laugh. A few of them. I've got a, a couple. Them, I've got a couple bits. You know, and I you're know like, I'm I never know this is funny do. because this makes my heart happy and it makes some other people's heart happy too. And my job isn't necessarily to make all the rest of the people laugh. It's to find my weirdos. Yeah. It's that's that's it's, what Pete Holmes calls his fans. His oh weirdos. yeah. That's, it's like yeah. you now. I'm traveling around handing out my cards and doing my thing and not worrying about it if most of the people don't laugh because there were like five people that loved it and they're going to tell their people that right. are the same and then and then you just gather you, I'd rather have like a very like a niche yeah. like this is me and I want to find the people who love me yeah. I don't want to wear a mask and impress the masses I don't want to do that anymore I'm so done I'm not in comedy to make money and to get famous right. if I was in comedy to make money and get famous that would be stupid because there's yep. easier ways to yep. make money there's easier yep. ways to get famous yep. I was before I left TV I got a job offer in a top 10 market that's like a big deal I would have and then the next step from there like I, I think I think if I would have pushed myself I could have gone to like a national level with weather and all Probably. that I could have done it I was good at my job not afraid to say that I think a lot of women are like I mean I'm Okay, like bitch, you were good at what you did. Yeah, yeah. I was Own very it. good at what I did, and I could have stuck with it, and I could have been way more well known right now than I am. Right. <laughs> you know, but I wasn't me, and I'd rather just be me, quirky weirdo, for five people at the bar who love it. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, and I and I think over time I'm gonna find more and more weirdos to join my yeah, join my my quest. <laughs> I I I had felt the very same way, and I. Uh-huh. I Chris had a really good talk with me. He said, you don't oh. seem like you're yourself on stage. And I'm like, I've been hearing that. Tell me why. And he's he's like, he said, you are, in your essence, a clean comic. You don't work well when you seem like you're trying to be edgy. You have a broad appeal, and you need to utilize that uh-huh. and and stick with who you are rather uh-huh. than like what you, you might uh-huh. think is funny. And I'm like, interesting. So I've stopped. I don't write down sets anymore. Uh, and it's been going a lot better. Good. Yeah. Uh, that was good. Chris, Chris is the, that, that dude's the godfather. I got, I've had the best advice I've ever gotten. It's been from him. That's really good. Yeah. He was the, he was the, like, Danielle sent me that very, a very, very long text. And I was like, hey, Chris, how do you, because he's one of my few friends I know who's, like, married successfully. Uh, like, I'm like, how did you, how do you know? That what, what what you can and can't settle for and with and like what up with and we had a very good conversation about it. Chris is a, a stellar guy, one of the greatest people I've ever known. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's and been he's working for me. Funny. He's so funny. I love that dude. He's gonna go places. Yeah, yeah. He's already going places. Yeah, he's going to Atlanta. Yeah. I know. We're, I'm gonna miss him. We're gonna to we're, we're gonna we're gonna lose. Uh, we're losing, we lost host battle now. We're gonna move on. <laughs> That's true. I know. There's a very big. There's about to be a giant. Because Winston's probably moving too, like in the next year. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So there's gonna be a He's power gonna... vacuum. And now that I know about Richmond comedy, I'm like, oh, it's not just a bunch of Winstons. Like I honestly think the Charlotte Charlottesville group as a whole oh. is better than the Richmond group as a whole, just from what All I've right. seen and who All I've right. met so far. I'm like, I have noticed it because, of, like, oh my gosh, since I've been traveling. When you go to different places, the style is so different. Yeah. Because the same comedians yeah. kind of... I you, can't... You, you kind of feed off each other some, in a sub, in, on a subconscious yeah. level. I can't you do comedy in New England yet. They, they, it's I so can't... weird. And it's not a bad thing, necessarily. I think you help each other. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it could be a bad thing if you stay in one place for too long. Because, I mean, I went to Atlanta, and they were just really digging, like, the long stories. And that doesn't work here. No. It really doesn't. And I say here in East Charlotte's, but like, I remember I tried to tell some stories and people were like, get to a punchline, we're bored, you know? And then I was doing punchline, punchline in Atlanta and stuff that was really working and they were like, we want to know about your life, girl. Like, just tell yeah. it like it is. Be real on stage. And that was great for me. This I'm is why I'm getting ex- that encouragement to just talk. And now I've kind of 
I'm now leaving too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk. This is why I'm excited home. to be a pilot. Pilot? I'm going to have free access to the country. Oh, yeah. I'm already excited. So I'm going to Raleigh in June to do my flight instructor course. That's awesome. So I'm doing a semester and a half of flying classes in nine days. Whoa. Yeah, yeah I'm going to I'm gonna snap. Did you do a podcast while you're flying a plane? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, theoretically, like, yes, Roger, but legally, you no. Roger when you're in an airplane, like a full airplane? Not, no. And it, Roger's just... going to dismiss it. I, I'm personable with the air traffic controllers. <laughs> Especially when they're not back, I'll be extra nice to them. Uh, but... I'm gonna have nine days where I'm gonna. That's gonna be the most stressed I ever, ever have ever been, yeah. and probably will ever be in the rest of my life. Yeah. The end of it, I'm going to a friggin' open mic. I gotta go to one while I'm in Raleigh. There's gotta be something there. Oh, there's a lot. I actually have like a list somewhere. Give me, Good. Give me the. I went to some days of the mics week. there. I'll be there for a okay. while. Okay, I've got. I gotta find my list. Somewhere. I'm excited about. Okay. All right. Why are we doing this? I have been given my dad's go ahead to go to a butcher shop and have a hundred dollar spending limit. Once I get my CFI, and I'm so shop? ready. A butcher shop. Yeah, we found a butcher in Lynchburg finally after two years. Is that years like a trying. big thing? Like it's like going to the toy store. I'm a, little, you got to I'm a cooking. I'm a cooking shop. fanatic. Oh, okay. Guy Fieri is my idol. <laughs> oh, gee whiz, Dad! <laughs> I'm making filet. Mi- I'm making filet mignon in a bourbon pan sauce. That's what I'm doing, That's and it's great. gonna be great. It's gonna be so good. That's really good. I've been there. Uh, yeah, no. You're I've been, like a I've jack been, of all trades. I really. That's my my problem is I love everything. And I can't That's half-ass problem. something. I, I have to. I, I, so I will go. I really. You'd think, you'd think I would be, but I'm not. You're Everything just, sucks know. and I hate it. No, it's so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was talking to Harley about this the other day. She's like, I get interested in things. And then I go ham at it for a really long time. Yeah. Until I get to a certain point where I'm like, I can't really get anywhere else unless I made this my full-time career. Like, I had a video game on the App Store. I could be a game designer if I wanted to, but I have to change my You're whole life. You're just really good it. at learning things. I'm good, yes, I totally and, and feel I get that. passionate behind whatever I feel like mm-hmm. doing at the time. And I go, I'm and like, then once my, you get like pretty good at it, you're like, well, I'm like Michael Scott. I'm, I'm exactly like Michael Scott from The Office. <laughs> uh, and usually I had a wall where I'm like, there's nowhere else to go. Comedy, there's always somewhere oh, else to yeah. go. There's, 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 it's, it's, it's. Sometimes it feels like it's a plateau, but there's always a way to get better. There's always something else you've been doing. And I'm like, that's why I like it, because I need something to be constantly pursuing that I can't get bored with. I need something to be chasing towards and working towards. I'm a dog. It's an eternal tennis ball. Yeah. I am a dog. Okay, I think, I'm glad you said that, because I kind of, I have that same struggle. Yeah. With, like, getting good at something, and then you're like, all it, right, you, you know. need You seek the eternal tennis ball. That's what yeah, I'm, that's what I'm calling it. this is the eternal it. tennis ball, man. This is great. Yeah. It's always, you know, it's funny, too. It's like, Look at that cloud. That think nice you cloud. just, like, totally killed it. Like, killed a set, and then... Then you, then you do another Winston one that's much about better, and then you look post. back at it, and you're like, that's terrible. I can't believe I thought oh, that yeah. was good. This oh, is yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I've been like. Every time I go back, I'm like, oh. Every time. Yep. Every time. Yep. And now I've got a, a, a fresh link to mentor, so I'm, I'm, I'm passing on all of this knowledge. I'm like, you're going to think you have good sets, and you're going to look back on them in a year, and you're like, oh, what was that? I know. She's not bad, though. She, her cat has dementia and AIDS, and he's an ordained minister in the state of Virginia. Her cat can legally perform weddings. How does that happen? I don't know, like, but it's great. Is the, it was like the Unitarian Life Church will ordain anything with a name to it. Yeah, but how does the cat do it? Like, it does a certain, like, I meow really once know. means I something. I really don't then, know. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, but it, technically meow, it can happen. Meow, 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 meow. I think she functions as his, his, his uh, liaison. I, I'm not sure how it works, but it's great. But she, she had this whole thing about like the cat. Uh, he's old and he's got like a swagger to him, and she likes to think he's like a like a like a, a World War II veteran. I look so tired without my glasses. And she realized he has dementia, and he started beating her in the middle of the night with his walker, screaming about the Japs. And I'm like, this, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like don't even get him started with fireworks. He thinks he's back uh, in Pearl Harbor. It's like this whole thing about the cat. It was really funny. And I'm like, dang it, I wish I had a, a first set that was that went that well. I All right. How, I love how sets sounds like sex. I had it's a, a similar. Let me just, let me just tell this you. is gonna. This my my Pete Holmes fanboyness is about to really show. He always talks about oh, comedy yeah. being a sexual thing. Because for a minute there, you are you are when it goes well, you are entirely in control of a oh, yeah. whole room of people oh, yeah. that are that are in your hand and yeah. you're making them feel what you want them to feel. Oh, yeah. And so it's a, it's a yeah, it's a thing. Well, well, like, so I record all my my sets, right? I usually yep. bring a camera or whatever. So I had my camera in my. Um, my so you recorded my Blacksburg set. Watch it on YouTube. Colby Night Comedy. There you go. But uh, I had this guy come over. Um, you 
know, to read the Bible. <laughs> but he was over, and um, <laughs> and he's like, nice camera. Like, why do you have that camera? And I said, oh, because he knew I was a comedian. I was like, I, I record my sets. Mm. Like, oh, no. <laughs> so I record all my sets, right? And he goes, is it recording right now? And I was like, no. And he's like, but you record all of your sex? And I was like, sets. Like, not. <laughs> think I would, and he was, the funniest thing was he wasn't like, you just go out. along with he it? He was like, is it recording right now? Like, are we going to be on a video? Oh, like, man. <laughs> like, is this going to turn up when I run for senator? Uh, like it's the important uh, questions. Lynn's cap was even on. Oh it, no! Oh. Bless oh, his heart. Oh. Bless his heart. He was pretty. He was a pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I could not live that life. Oh, uh, it's great. It's great, Colby. It's great. I get so attached. I, mean, I was. I was okay. Long story short, I went to Catholic school. I, my parents were very strict. We didn't even talk about sex. I got married when I was 22 years old. Almost um, my life. Yeah, I just, I was just such a little, like, you know, Mother Teresa. And then, you know, this past year, I've been divorced, and I've just been, like, I'm a woman, and I'm going to use my body while I can and have a great time, because I can. It's 2019. I don't have to pretend to hate sex. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Like, women need to really embrace their sexuality. I think it's actually dangerous if they don't, because a lot of women think sex is only for men. committed relationships, only for men, right? So what happens is they associate sexual pleasure with, like, companionship and, mm -hmm. like, being taken care of and all that. So it's like every time they're a little horny and they just want to catch a dick, they gotta, they gotta be in some committed relationship. And then now they, they get, end up they get stuck used in those to, relationships. They get stuck in relationships and they also get used to that feeling of being taken care of. Yeah. And then when you are alone, it's very disturbing and it's mm. very scary. You know what I mean? I was faced with that. Like, oh my gosh, I'm actually alone. Like, there's no one here to hold me. What am I going to do? And I was having like that, a that, mental that's breakdown. That's why being a long distance for three years has helped me not yeah. be dependent on someone else. I'm like, I can I yeah. handle myself. Right. But I mean, but even like, I did long distance for a while, but even just having someone to call, that emotional, yeah. like, I miss you. Like, there was a moment in my life after my divorce and everything where I was laying in bed and I had like this realization that like, if I died tonight, no one would know. Probably for a couple of weeks. Oof. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And it was scary. It was like the feeling in my stomach was like being out in the middle of an ocean. Have you ever been on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean? Oh, the first day I woke night, up and had a panic attack. At night, and you're like, no one could hear me scream. Like, oh, like if you yeah. were just, like, oh, it just I it almost felt it. like that. Like, there's no one here. Ooh. And I had to get very, very comfortable in that loneliness. And once I finally felt comfortable in that loneliness, mm -hmm. life got a lot more fun. Because now I didn't need anyone to fill a void, right? Now it's just fun. Life is really, really fun. And yeah, I love an emotional connection. I'm not trying to just like use people as a sure. piece of meat. But I did for a little while. Yeah. And it was my right to do so. And I encourage all the women out there to just find yourself a boy toy. You know what I mean? They love it. Let them know they're a boy toy. Don't play with feelings. That's where it crosses the line when you're not being honest. When people say they love you, but they're really just using you, that's bad. But if they're like, hey, we're attractive, what do you say? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, okay. And then sometimes feelings actually develop. I mean, everyone knows that, right? You catch feelings. Pretty but sure. But it's great when both and We've all seen feelings. How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I love that show. But, um, now I'm not. I'm no longer so Marshall Erickson. I don't know who I am on How I Met Your Mother anymore. I'm certainly not Barney, and I don't think I'm Ted. I used to be I don't Ted, know but who I'm not I am. Ted I guess anymore. I am. I guess I am. What's the one that Ted really liked? But she was Robin. Yeah, you're I guess a lot I'm more like, of a Robin because like, like she used to kind of doing her own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a lot. A lot of my comedy is about that. Like I say that my comedy is very sexual. Yeah. It's not dirty. I don't tell dirty jokes. I tell sexual jokes because sex is not That's dirty. Your catchphrase. It's, a, it's a human thing. It's my thing. It's my phrase. Yep. Um. Here I am telling this to Liberty student over here who's not allowed to sleep over at people's houses without an adult. Now I can well no, technically, <laughs> actually technically I'm still not allowed to. But who's gonna know? Oh 
<laughs> I'm off campus now. Who's gonna know? I have moved out. I, I have my own rules. place. I'm an adult now. Yeah. I can cook with you, wine you, like a badass. You learned the rules and now you break them. <laughs> right son Ooh, full circle nice callback yeah that's a good note to end this on <laughs> all right anything we're plugging plug gonna, it we're gonna plug our show one more work. time right yeah yeah gotta catch both of no, us yeah that's gonna be the only parking spot I'll, I'll plug the show while you're there all right um may, may 19th. 19th it's on a sunday seven o'clock in the evening you can get out by the time you gotta go to bed all right dinner's included twenty dollars if you buy online right now you can go to Christina Montori's Facebook page. You're gonna link that in this or whatever, uh, or the, link the event. I don't know. I'll link it in the I don't YouTube. Know. We'll figure it out, but I'll just spell it: K R I S T I N A. Space. Space. M O N T U O R I, and the event is there, and you can buy those tickets. Dinners included. I'll be on it. It's gonna Dinners be a blast. Dinners included. It's a good deal. It'll All right, dinner and a show, deal. twenty bucks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Never right. miss an opportunity to plug uh, yourself. That's your Facebook. Do you, you, you want to plug bedroom. your Instagram? <laughs> it's a butt plug joke. I still, I, I still um, want to see that joke work. I've not, it's it, worked several times. It? Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I feel, I, I'm proud. I helped with that one. <laughs> you did. I, I did. That. Yep. Uh, my Instagram, same name. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. I gotta get like a sign-off catchphrase or something for this. <laughs> any, do. any ideas? Any bright ideas? Words of wisdom from the universe? We'll probably think of it. Um, it'll be like. Now that I'm thinking about it, we gotta. Maybe you should ask your your fans to. Um, All three of them. Well, two now. To, uh, two after this last to month. Vote on a on a on a catchphrase. Or I'll something. do that. Yeah, actually, ooh, I'll have that. Uh, it, if you share this, I'll have I'll have that uh, part of it. So I'll get some okay. comments. Okay. I'll share the shit out of this. Man. Yeah, do it. Oh, oh that could be your catchphrase. All right. Good night, guys. Share the shit out of this. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs>